Welcome back, YouTube. We're going to side this thing today. This is the garage that I have a video of. Maybe actually be the last video I put up. I'm not sure the order in which these are going to go. Um, the roofing crew came by over the weekend, got done, and now uh, we're going to throw some vinyl siding at this thing. First up, uh, we've got to get all the house wrap on. We've got to get that door installed. What I'd like to do today is get all the metal bent so I don't have to keep dragging the brake around with me because it's on my trailer and uh, luckily it is still on my trailer. It didn't make the trip very well. <laughs> but I got it here. It didn't fall off, didn't smash anybody on the highway. That's a good thing. So I'm going to get set up. We're going to run some house wrap and start taking some measurements and uh, get the ball rolling. I'll bring you along as needed. Not a full-time cider, so bear with me. This might take a week and a half. Hopefully... I always kind of figure a wall a day, so four days tops on this. I'd like to get it done at three. Let's see what we can do. I don't know. We're going to find out. House wrap's done all the way around, and it's all completely stapled off. I just have not done the gables yet, but I'll do that um, as I get up there. Next up is to get some measurements for where the, um, yes, man, my brain's fried already. Uh, measurements for the, the F channel, for the soffit, good grief, and uh, then we will go from there. We figure that out, then we can get our corners on. Um, when our corners are on, we can pop our lines for starter, and then we can work on getting the door installed. That way it can get good measurements and bend all the metal. I guess people who do it all the time could bend metal for a door without even looking at it, um, but that ain't me. So, onward and upward and into the humidity we go. Let's go. Alright, here's kind of how I'm going to do um, the soffit and stuff here. Now there's a million ways to feed a cat, or whatever that line is. Um, what I like to do is just go off the soffit, square back, and I make a mark. So that'll be the top of my soffit there. And now I've got a half inch of actual vinyl soffit that comes down. But then I'm going to run J-channel for it to sit in and that has a little lip so that has to come down like another uh, what was it three sixteenths or something like that so I measure down that and then I make a mark now I'm gonna put a nail in so the bottom of the nail is right at my mark now I can butt into that measure down that'll give me my corner because I'm gonna run my corners and my starter what I want to do is get my corners in I'm gonna run all my siding up and my last pan's gonna run up tall and then what I'm going to do is run my J-channel all along on top of it and nail it in because that'll hold that top pan. If, if you don't do that, it's hard to tuck it into UT and stuff. And they make little crimper things. And you can put silicone on it and stick it in there. You can face nail it. There's a million different ways to do it. I'm going to do it this way on this one because I think it's going to be a little easier. It should get the ball rolling. Just get me, get me hanging siding is what I want to do. So I've done this all the way around. Uh, I'm going to pull corner measurements, and then we're going to install corners, and then we can get our starter. Real quick, usually on garages, because they have a slope, an inch to an inch and a half of pitch towards the big door, um, I don't ever make a level line for the starter strip. I just come down um, and make it parallel to the soffit, if that makes sense, especially on a slab like this that's all kind of all over the place. I'm just kind of coming down from each eave, it'll just be parallel to the soffit, so it'll look uniform all the way around, even if it's not necessarily level, because I plumbed my walls in, but nothing's really level. I mean, if you saw that other video, it's a little this way, a little that way. All right, my corners are in. I got measurements on my starter 
strip and where I wanted my siding to begin, which was all based on where I wanted it to end up there. Um, and then I marked all my corners with the top of the starter before I installed them. Uh, now I know where to pop my line, so I just go around, put a nail on one side, hook my um, uh, chalk line, go down to the other mark, give it a pop. I'll do that all the way around. Uh, and then we're ready to we'll probably install the door next. I'm making this up as I go along if you guys haven't figured that one out yet. I don't know what I'm doing. Good. All right, a uh, quick update for progress and a little bit of whining on my part. The supplier always sends this metal starter out and it just does not grab the vinyl. You just have to kind of hook it in there and uh, it's such a pain in the butt to get that first row on, but I got it. Um, Start with a full, and then all I do is cut two off, two off, two off, two off. So I guess it'd be, you know, two off, four off, six off, eight off, ten off. And uh, I get all those cut, and then I can just funnel them all in. I come down here with my cutoffs and start with what fills in and keep going until I get to the point where I've got a full. Um, and then I can just run fulls in the field. And then I go back to more starters. It's great having a uh, stud finder. It's nice because with the uh, house wrap on, it's hard to see. But when I do find, you can kind of see the green line. I'll mark them. What I like to do is go through and you find the forefoot where the OSB, you can feel it. And that's where you throw a nail in. That would be the eye, so then these were all eyes. Do, do, do. Makes it nice and easy. Um, those are about all the tips I got for you at the moment. I'm going to keep rolling because um, I really want to get the, uh, you know, down here in the dog duty part of the day so I can get home, get washed up, not be climbing around in it again tomorrow. Back to work. See you guys shortly. All right, I got the two sides up and the back as far as I could go before I had to bend metal. I put the door in and uh, I've got to bend metal to wrap the brick mold so that I can get my J channel on so I can keep going. Um, the problem is I don't have any black nails for this black metal so we're gonna have to uh, get creative. Um, so let's see what we can do. This is the creepy thing painted on the back of the garage that I was pointing at in the other video from this job. The thing's freaking me out, man. I don't like it. Okay. We're going to set you up here. We're just going to rock it right here in the alley. <laughs> I don't want to move the brake. Uh, it's a little wonky, but I'm not going to bend all my metal today, so uh, working in this situation, I don't think it's going to be too bad. The problem is what I use is a giant spring clamp to hold the metal, and I don't have it. I don't know where it went. I'm sure it's in here somewhere, <laughs> probably in the cab. I don't know. So I've got a, I've got a quick grip clamp squeeze, you know what I mean. We're going to try to do it that way.
Okay, I didn't have you guys invited along, I was just trying to be productive, but I'm above the door in the back here. Got my metal in, had to temporarily put some different color nails in, <laughs> get that swapped out when I go and grab some nails tonight, but we're good all the way around here. This top piece is a Z-bend, so water can't get behind that metal. You gotta flash the tops of things. Um, so I'm happy about that. Now I think I'm going to come and knock out more of this side because it's in the shade at the moment. So I'm gonna keep running because it's only, I don't know, can you see that? 345 or so? I got another hour or so that I can work. Um, I'm being like, crazy super productive today. I'm excited about that. Although I'm a little tired if you can't tell. Okay, uh, I'm gonna cut some more starters and we'll start running them. And I apologize I'm not showing you a whole big wide view on stuff because there's phone numbers and stuff on this uh, house wrap and we're just gonna let everybody stay anonymous. Um, so when I get an opportunity, probably when I'm working on this gable here, I'll show you the Z-Bend above the door and stuff and uh, um, show you a lot more because I can set up at the truck here and uh, I won't be impeded. There's kids out there playing around and they got security camera and they come and go as their home so you know I like to try to stay a little low-key so I'll do that but I'm gonna keep working on this side maybe I'll give you another wrap-up um, before I get out of here today. I'm doing good. It's a good good day. Good day. Thumbs up for me. I didn't realize what time it was. So I've got the metal for the sides of the overhead door. Um, we're going to bend that. We're going to install that. Maybe I'll run the starter and the J channel. And then maybe run some siding. I don't know. It's getting late. Crap. Not even worth taking. I can't collect enough of it to take. All right, we're gonna run these. It's pushing five o'clock. I still gotta pack up, strap down, get out of here. Some of you might be thinking, if the weather's beautiful, why don't you just keep working? But I'm old. I'm old now, and I just can't do that anymore. If I push too hard, then I'm hurting and I move too slow the next day. So it's diminishing returns. So I'm feeling pretty good. I think the weather helps. It's kind of like being a pitcher in the you know mid innings of a game. You're warmed up. You're feeling good. You can throw harder. I'm throwing harder right now. I think I'm I think I'm topping 90 with my fastball. But I don't want to burn myself out. You know, don't want to miss my next start. So <laughs> let's go install this stuff. Um, be very careful not to hold your metal super tight down to the concrete because if the concrete moves like uh, heaves from frost or whatever it'll buckle it I might be a little tight actually there but this is an old slab so it's probably moved about as much as it's going to
this this got cut long so what I do is I kind of hold it in I tuck the metal over it so water just water can't get in there it all any which way not this way or that way sideways front ways back ways can't get in there we'll z-bend the top I still have to house wrap it right now I'm gonna pack up I'm spent very productive though I'll give you a walk around here in a second all right first day walk around Almost had this side up as far as I could reach. Definitely did good on this side. Door turned out pretty well. Just got to get my black nails, which I only, there's only going to be like 10 or 15 exposed nails. This side I can show you everything because uh, I've got it all covered. Um, so this last row will just have the top ripped off. The J chain will go right over it and pin it in. Then the soffit goes on. Metal goes over the soffit. Boom. Bang. Done. Catch you guys in the morning, which will be right after this transition. Bang. Day two. I already got the ball rolling. Um, homeowner was out here. I was talking to him while I was getting set up and, and going, uh, working on the soffit on this side. Um, I'm gonna cut it the old-fashioned way. Uh, I don't have a cut table or anything. I don't do this enough to warrant that stuff. Um, so it's a six-inch overhang. I'm just gonna cut a bunch of five and a half. That should give me all the room I need. I'm gonna staple them up, and uh, then we'll get ready to bend some metal. So. Uh, looks like the battery might die in a second, so I'm just going to start cutting, and then uh, let's see where we go from there. figure out why that was such a struggle fest but then I realized I don't normally use the pneumatic stapler I just use the hand stapler but this was out so I used it yeah, it's too bad um, I'm gonna get some measurements for metal and we'll start bending metal for these eaves uh, we'll get the other side done with the soffit and the metal on there um, and then it's just going after these gable walls Make it sound simple, but it's still a lot of time ahead of me because I'm slow. Slow. Yeah. Here we go. There's my little return, my bird box, whatever you want to call it. Bent up and did it all in one piece. That's how it looks. Um, maybe I will show you how I bend one. Maybe not. I don't know. I had to run to the store yesterday to pick up the uh, black nails and whatnot, and picked up a new clamp that I'll promptly lose. But it was like a dollar twenty-nine, so it's pretty strong too. What is it Tool Shop at Menards? See if I can show you how I do this. I have an inch back bend. I have an inch back bend. And 
inch and a half back to it because this the rake board is an inch and a half, uh, and then 12 inches. So that gives me a mark at two and a half and at 14 and a half. These will be my bends. For the overhang. Or, uh, it's going to be my bends for the bird box, the return. Going the other way is the one inch bend. Mark that on the outside. So, I bend that one first. Cut. Put that bottom off so I can make the bend. I can for a 90. Then I have to snip. Instead of cutting a vertical, I cut a little itty bitty angle piece out. So it's just a a little bit one way of vertical, a little bit other way of vertical. Here you get some hand benders. But that stuff costs money. I already bought these yesterday. when you're making in more intricate cuts. Now I already measured where I need to be This will end and it's four and three quarters up. And then this all has to be cut out. about it. Let me spin you around and uh, show you an installation.
about it. Get J. Caulk in anything that needs it. Z bend for the top. I got my miter so I can start. I'm gonna use the phone. Nope. Call that back. I got my lefts and my rights and my big snips. I'm gonna have to start wearing a tool belt. This is ridiculous. Bit of a struggle fest on some of these because I'm not well versed enough in it to know which way to attack the cuts. Does that make any sense? Alright, I'm gonna tape that in. Hopefully, I have enough tape. Um, and then while I'm set up here, I might uh, install, bend, and install that metal. I don't know. Okay, okay got all of these done for the rake boards. These are easy because just covering the 2x6 up there we just got to tuck under the metal and get back enough to uh, get the J channel. So uh, these are all like 6 foot 2 because we're about 11 foot uh, with the rake boards so it'll be two of these per so I've got eight of them. That'll be all four and we should be completely done um, with the metal. Should be done bending. Alright, so we're gonna get these installated and then we're gonna uh, see where we go from there. I don't think I'm gonna push too much because I'm just not gonna get it done today. So it'll give me something to do tomorrow. You gotta have something to do, right? Pretty simple process. I'm gonna go repeat on the other side the other gable and uh, probably call it a day but I'm gonna go get that and uh, then I'll let you know where I'm gonna go from there who knows it's an adventure all the metals bent everything's installed uh, should be done with the brake as long as I don't crash into anything tomorrow hope that isn't foreshadowing knock on wood um, this whole front needs to be done I don't even have starter on it yet uh, but the back is just the gable Man, um, so that'll be first thing tomorrow, let's hit that gable and then come around to the front and do this front and get cleaned up and get out of here. Depending on what time I get out of here tomorrow, I may head to the other job I've got going on, the one where I built the garage on the fire thing and uh, demoed the roof in that bathroom area. I've been posting them in the stories, um, probably long past when this video goes up, but you should follow along and keep an eye on the stories or even go over to Instagram and follow along because that's a lot more real-time stuff of what I'm doing because not everything can be a video most everything is not a video honestly alright uh, see you tomorrow morning day three in three two one day three um, I'm kinda set up on the house side already Ready to go on that, but I think real quick I'm going to start tidying up in here and loading some of the stuff onto the trailer because the door is supposed to be going in at some point today. Um, seeing how it's not getting an opener, it might be later in the day because they'll do two or three in a day sometimes. But I want to load up so if the guy does show up, everything's out of the way. So probably going to do that, do some tidying up. We'll go after that back, the house side, get that done, then hopefully... Uh, I won't have any interference from the door guy and stuff. I'll be able to set up and give you the whole, the whole picture, all of this. We'll get this all done and uh, get out of here because I don't want to be here anymore. So let's get going. Well, guys, my sincerest apologies. 
I got the house side done and then I came over here and I started working and I forgot about y'all. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. I just left you sitting on the floor of my truck. That's terribly rude. I hope you forgive me. Um, but I got going here. I got J Channel up and I started running those. That side, I only have the starter on and I can show you that and we'll get rolling on that. Once I get up high enough, set up some scaffold, J the rest over the door, start doing the J up the gable, running pans, uh, hit a few things with some caulk, and we are done. Done. It's, it's 1030. Um, actually moving a little quicker than I thought, although this is the bulk of the work to be done here. Let's get rolling. I'll bring you along this time. All right, starter's in, uh, J's in, up the side of the door. I've got a whole bunch cut, ready to go. Let's do it. Try to line up the corners the best you can. measurement on this side and that side to make sure we're relatively even. I don't want to be crooked. Sixty-four and a half. Sixty-four and a half on the other side. Spot on. Woohoo! Sometimes you get lucky. I don't know what I'm doing. Seventeen. Uh, It's about 16 and 3 quarter on the other side, so I'm going to have to do a little <laughs> with it on this side. So we're going to get uh, some scaffold set up, and then we're going to go from there. I did get my chalk line. It's got blue chalk in it, which I think is not permanent. Yeah, I know it wipes up easy. least favorite cut of mine to make. Hurts my arm. The other least favorite cuts are all the rest of them.
find my lines above the center. Derek from Vice Grip Garage is doing. Probably driving home with some cool car. Nope. Definitely stuck on the side of the road. Gotta get that thumbnail, yo. We're done. All right, so as luck would have it, uh, pretty much the minute after I put that last piece in and got down, said we're done, broke the scaffold down, uh, the door guys showed up, made me move, pulled into the alley so they could unload the door and everything. Then I had to clean up. Um, and while the door guys were working, I thought I had a chance to maybe shoot a little bit of an outro and a walk around. And that didn't happen because then the homeowner came out and we were talking while I was loading things up and, uh, never got the camera back out. So now I'm in the garage shooting an outro because I want to get this video uploaded because, uh, first thing in the morning, I'm leaving to head out of town to go jeeping. And I want to have this video up for you guys, so hopefully this time frame is working out. If not, I look like a bum because uh, this should be going up this Saturday. Um, 
whatever Saturday you see this, we're gonna, just going to call it this this Saturday. But uh, so uh, no walk around. It's really the outro you get. So I'm going to leave you with a couple pictures, and um, you know, next time I side a garage, maybe it'll be a better video. So if you want to see the better video, you better subscribe and turn on all the notifications so you'll know when the better video goes up. So until that better video arrives, I'll see you then. Thumbnail.